Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering HP Big Data Conference 2015, brought to you by HP Software. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Boston, Massachusetts for HP Big Data 2015. Big Data Conference, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We'll go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Chris Sellen, who's the VP of BizDev at HP Software, HP Vertica, HP Big Data. What's the name? I guess it's HP Software. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you again. Thanks, John. It's always a pleasure, Dave. Great to see you again. <laughs> HP Software now, HP is on the way to split. The enterprise group, HP Software, big role, Vertica, yes. everything's kind of tucked under. Give us a quick two cents of how it's all structured and, and, and the whole big data team, what's it look like? Uh, sure, well, big data is, there will be two companies post-separation, which, and by the way, we're operating as separate companies today as of August 1st, uh, but the separation becomes full and final on November 1st, which is a new fiscal year, but as of November 1st, there will be two Fortune 50 companies, I believe, HP Inc., which is basically the print um, PC and solutions around print and PC business, and then Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which is where our business unit will be, which is where Big Data will be. Hewlett Packard Enterprise is basically what is now HP's enterprise group, um, HP Software, and HP Enterprise Services. So, and it's almost exactly half and half in terms of revenue. So, okay. So now, the focus of the conference is now grown up three years, I guess that's, yep. you know, dog years, that's, you know, internet years, that's big now. Mm -hmm. Take us through, what, what's that this year? I mean, you've been involved at the grassroots at, since the founding of this conference. Yep. It's been DevOps, we're very, as you know, we're very uh, high on this conference. We love the, the audience of DevOps and engineering and, and customers. What's, what, mm -hmm. what's the evolution? Take us through where we're at. So I think the evolution, as you know, this has always been an event that's been really focused on customers and what we've been hearing from customers, and by the way, this is not just true in big data, this is true across all of HP and the emerging Hewlett Packard Enterprise, but we're getting much more business involvement, financial involvement. Big data is not just an IT topic anymore. It never really was only an IT topic, but more and more and more, it's about what can I do with all of this data, how can I use it to transform my business, stay ahead of my competition. So the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise value proposition is going to be built around four key transformation areas. Becoming a data-driven enterprise is one of them. Certainly, Hewlett Packard has a very much of a heritage in the IT organization, but absolutely moving upstream more and more into helping solve business problems, deploy business applications and solutions, and the area that you know we just made an announcement today of our startup accelerator program, what we're really seeing, because as you probably know, because I know John, you even used to work for Hewlett Packard a long time ago, yeah. is it's a company that we really have an unmatched partner ecosystem and channel. And what we're really looking to do is expand that into the startup community. So even the smallest, earliest stage developers, you know, we've got the Facebooks, the Etsy's, the Twitters, the Zynga's all here at the conference. The next generation Facebooks, we want them to be building on our Haven platform as well. We want to be supporting them, enabling them, so we're really looking to expand the definition of developers and really work with a lot of the earlier stage companies It's as interesting well. you bring up the heritage and kind of how you guys are solving problems for startups, but also mm -hmm. customers, is that one of the themes that's coming out of the show is this whole SQL on Hadoop thing, mm -hmm. which we all been kicking around, but the thing is is that the, the, the customers are all saying, ingestion's a huge problem, Yes. one. And two, SQL is the lingua franca of analysts and data scientists, and that's accelerating usage and adoption. Absolutely. Can you comment on that? And what does that mean for the, the ecosystem? What does that mean for the channels? Does it make it easier to sell? Does it mean to adopt? Yep. Take us through what that means. Well, it's very consistent with what I was saying earlier, right? Just saying, I want to build a data lake without understanding what kind of value we should expect from the data lake and what we want to be able to get out of the data lake. In other words, we want to be able to, we sometimes talk about a smarter data lake, like a data lake that you can actually ask questions and get answers and such. And you know, so much has been focused on just building a lake these past few years, and what, as the business organizations, the business buyers, the financial buyers, the CFO, the CMO, start getting more involved in these conversations, they want to know what they can get out of it. And as you said, SQL is the lingua franca right now still. That's what people are trained on, people know, and they know it performs as well. So we've basically put our engine, really not just Vertica, but the entire Haven stack on top of Hadoop to be able to help make the data lake smaller. Well, and that whole SQL so, 
to Hadoop was a big tailwind for Vertica when it started to occur. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about the Haven Accelerator program. What's the impetus for that? Um, who's it really targeted to and what do you bring into the table? Yeah, well we've given away for years now um, thousands of copies of Vertica Community Edition a month. We're signing up thousands of developers to idle on demand. We have these free services. But what has happened is that, and we're doing a lot of hackathons, we had a hackathon at this event, we're doing hackathons around the world regularly, but some of these developers are saying, okay, now I want to go build some real stuff. I want to build a real solution. I want to go after the enterprise. You know, I want to be the next Facebook, and I want to build on your platform, but you know, I'm still kind of struggling with, I'm not that big, I don't have that much money. We don't want price to be a barrier. So it's basically a bridge program for those early stage developers who want to really start taking something into production and really building out this next generation of big data solutions, analytic solutions in different vertical markets, horizontal markets. We want to be able to help them and enable them and you know, take the price barrier out of the equation. So, so we've created a program what? for them you have to qualify for. Yeah. It's a year long program, you do have to qualify, you can apply on the web, it's basically special pricing, assistance, we give support. So you know, again, it's a step above the free tier, which we've always had. And we're but basically you're not, you're not taking to, any equity, though, right? No, it's no, it's not an investment program. So, so, no. so the use case is startups who get used to the technology and want to build scalable Gen mm -hmm. One, right? Yes, that's pretty much what you guys are targeting, right? Right. And this free, or is there a discount, or? Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's basically a special pricing program. Okay. It's if you go free? to vertica.com slash accelerator, <laughs> no, it's not free. Oh, some, okay. actually, some parts of it are free. No, though, no, right? actually there is a free tier. There is a free yeah, okay. tier. I mean, we've always had free. Yeah, free. We've right. always had community products free. And yeah. there's actually, there is a free tier of the startup accelerator program, I correct myself. But there's also a paid tier as well. A lot of that is around support. Got a okay. lot of it is around right. support costs. Because you know, and as you probably also heard us say this morning, hopefully heard us say, we're really doing more and more working with open source. Our new predictive analytics offering is an open source offering. It's a support only. We don't charge a license fee. So we're we're moving toward a closer to the open source model. We're seeing more and more of a blended model as well. So most of the costs are actually in support. It's so not that's license the, fee. That's the streaming so. analytics part of Excavator. Is that right? Uh, no, it's not the stream. That's the yeah. Kafka integration. Okay. Um, so but you're talking this about is the uh, distributed uh, R. The distributed ah, okay. R work, because as you probably know, R has become very, very popular in the data science community, sure. particularly with sort of newer data scientists coming out of school whose parents told them data science is the hottest job of the 21st century because they read in Harvard Business Review, go be a data science. These kids are all coming out learning R these days, but R actually natively only runs on a single node. So you can't truly run R on big data sets. Well, HP Labs work to basically create an extension of R that we call distributed R, which we've now productized into Haven Predictive Analytics, that lets you use the R language in a multi-threaded environment and essentially use it on big data. Because one of the one of the downsides of R is you can really only use it on limited, you know, natively n limited um, so data set sizes. And that's, so. you contribute that back to open source? And we contribute it back to open source, yes, oh, okay. exactly. So, so I got to ask you, it was a question from one of the journalists out there that was back channeling me, they're watching theCUBE, of course yep. they all do. Um, Kafka. Kafka. Bearish, bearish or bullish on Kafka? I mm -hmm. pretty much know the answer since I'm just, you right. guys are pretty much pro Kafka. But the question from the journalist uh, was, what's bearish versus bullish mm -hmm. and why? Mm -hmm. So give me the why Kafka's so relevant. Well, we're bullish because from a capability standpoint, it really solves a lot of problems. It can really serve as a true intermediate layer and help with all of these data ingestion issues you were talking about before mm -hmm. in kind of environments where you've got very heterogeneous data sources, different data coming from different places, different formats. It, it really, it's a very nice architecture. And, um, and it's definitely a question you should talk about more with Shilpa, but the biggest thing is we also hear our customers asking for it and using it. We've got a number yeah. of customers that are using Kafka in production. Yeah. And um, we're already, we've already got this capability really out. Yeah. I mean, they been, had a great, yeah. CB was, had a great description. Again, yeah. he was just straight up, hey, it's the best. Yep, yep, it works well, <laughs> our customers like it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, we had our, we have our customer advisory board meeting before this, we talked a lot about it. There's a lot of enthusiasm. Not all of them are using it. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there. It's still alphabet soup or, you know. Uh, Don't say alphabet alph soup, because that's now Google. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, <laughs> see, yeah. I've been so busy with the conference, I haven't caught up on the news yet. Their this URL week, is abc.xyz, and they go. got all the letters cornered. They nice. cornered the market on the alphabet. <laughs> that, but if you okay. go to abc.wtf, you go to Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Very I, nice. I digress. <laughs> yes. 
Um, okay, so give us the update on the ecosystem. Okay, channels are big. Mm -hmm. Again, this is one of those things yep. that we've been watching with you guys in particular and other um, large multinationals, is that ecosystems are great cost of sales mm -hmm. leverage yep. for the manufacturer, solution provider, like HP. With the cloud and big data kind of coming together, because this conference kind of, to me, always represented that. I know you guys don't call it this, may not like my messaging on it, but DevOps meets real world. Because mm -hmm. analytics are a big part of that, so a lot of the, the you, know, you see the Facebooks here, you see that kind of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yep. But what's going to make it easier for the channel? Where is it the SQL on Hadoop? Is it some of the abstraction layers? Is it the Haven architecture? It's some of the Colin abstraction layers, but it's also understanding the customer's business. We have our big annual partner conference uh, every year in the spring. I think you guys are there as well. And when I was there this year, I heard some partners, the partners who were doing the best mm -hmm. were the ones who were engaging in understanding their customer's business. So not just, I can make Vertica run real fast, mm -hmm. but I can use Vertica or I can create Haven solutions to actually solve problems. Customer loyalty, fraud, those different sort of problem spaces and problem sets. So, and we've created our Haven application framework, which we've also announced here, to help some of the partners with that as well. But the partners who are really sort of figuring out how to adapt the technology to solve business problems and bridging the gap are the ones who are doing the best. You know, the ecosystem is a very broad thing because there are also data, we have data providers, now we have data curation companies who are helping companies both understand their data and what's out there. We've got, you know, Tamers here, Relations here, we've got a lot of our partners so in that space. So you see specialism and expert, kind of domain expertise driving a lot of this? Yeah, that's that's definitely a growing area. We've got the, the typical technology partners, then we've got a lot of our embedded partners as well, including the startups we talked about earlier, and all the commercial ISVs who are embedding What do you mean embedded partners? You mean people who are OEMing? The OEMing, MSPing, yes. Okay. Exactly, and then of course creating solutions that are based on the Haven stack. Well, so. Colin, in his keynote, talked yes. about ERP, how it used to be highly customized, mm -hmm. and it became packaged apps, and I thought he was going to say, we're following the same track with analytics apps, but he put a little different twist on it. Highly customized today, mm -hmm. with some demand for packaged apps, but it's not that simple. You've got to have these sort of composable Right, apps. It, it, composable is a good way to put it, yeah. It's, and that's why we call this a framework and we've had lots of discussions whether we should call it a framework or a platform, Haven's a platform, but something you can build on. But yes, if we can get you 80% of the, the way there and take care of most of the plumbing issues and the ingestion issues and obviously the analytics issues, but at the same time, how I want to see it, what I want to see, what the front end looks like and kind of you know what the key metrics are, Organizations want to customize that, and they may want a partner to do it for them, they may want to do it themselves, because you know my metrics and my even my direct competitors' metrics may be very different. It's very tied into how businesses and organizations are differentiating themselves in this day and age, because that's really what big data is about, right? It, analytics becomes the differentiation, and we can't package that too much. We've got to leave sort of that last mile, that last 20%, able to be customized. So that's really what we've tried to deliver. What's that? What's the dev layer, the sort of tools layer, the <laughs> people call it PaaS, mm -hmm. what's HP strategy with regard to Well, that? you know, it's a combination. Um, it's a combination of obviously our Haven components, Vertica, Idle, talked about predictive analytics. Uh, a lot of the open source stuff, you know, we were absolutely wor using working with Kafka. As you know, we work with all the major Hadoop distros. We've been doing a lot of co-engineering with Hortonworks around things like work. Um, and then we've also been working with some of our other ecosystem partners, like a lot of the uh, a, lot, a lot of the front end components. Some of them we built, but a lot of them we also co-engineered with the folks at Logi Analytics. So we've been working very closely with them as well. And um, so, and we're working with our other ecosystem partners also. You know, it, it's we've got a very broad set of capabilities, and it's sort of a mix and match components model where you know you take what you need, understand what analytics you need look at what front end you want to build. I mean, we really see this as a solution offering that's going to be delivered primarily through services. In some cases, our services, and then our services channel. So, but it's analytics enabled at the core. And so. Excavator is an attempt to sort of integrate more of the pieces, is that right? To create more of a solution? Excavator is the next major version of Vertica, and I know that you have Shilpan, she'll give you the full deep dive on Excavator. Yeah, yeah, I can't A wait lot of that. the open source integration stuff that we're doing, uh, working around Hadoop, working around Kafka, performance improvements, and a lot of work to really enable this next generation of business apps. And also, you know, obviously, becoming more cloud friendly, um, you know, certainly we're seeing more and more cloud out there in the marketplace. You know, it was, you still don't see companies dumping petabytes of data in the cloud, but we have, 
we have some companies dumping pretty significant numbers of terabytes. In well, the cloud, and the cloud guys days, are trying so. to build a, a data management layer and provide mm -hmm. it as services, mm -hmm. but they don't have the sophistication that, yeah. that you can offer. And then you talk to your customers, and they're saying, "No, the problem we have is data has gravity. We can't. We move it into the cloud. We try to move it back. We." We, we, we exchange data and our bandwidth costs go through the roof. Right, so that, so right. Well that's the whole thing, the cost model shifts things. around and we absolutely have, if you really look at a lot of our really biggest, most strategic customers that are running you know, hundreds of terabytes, petabytes of data, the cloud economics don't work for them. That's what I'm, what I'm saying, but it's it's yeah. changing. I mean, it is changing. The cloud is definitely becoming a bigger. Well, especially factor, for the so. unpredictable stuff. Yes. You know, where you need that elasticity. Yeah. So. Well, that actually came up, and I won't name the customer because they probably don't want me to. But that was exactly what they were saying: was they discovered when they need to burst, the cloud is a good solution. When they've got variable demand, but when it's steady, the cloud is absolutely more expensive, and yeah. it makes a lot more sense to bring it on premise. And so you're seeing kind of these mixed environments that you know we'll use the cloud for the unpredictable versity stuff. But if we kind of know what our needs are going to be, then you know it's cheaper to have it and, in house. But UHP so. don't really care, right? No, no. I mean, ultimately, that's exactly what we're gearing up for: is sort of hybrid cloud, hybrid data center. So, yeah. So a lot of what Excavator is about is about supporting that more effectively as well. So, all right, Chris. Outlook for what you guys are doing, next steps, ecosystem. Tell me what's happening. Well, you're going to continue to see us do more and more to you know integrate Haven and you know, make Haven more real in terms of our value proposition around Haven has always been 100% of the data. The structured data, the unstructured data, the semi-structured data, analyze it all together, cross-analyze it, and then build solutions on top of it. And that's where the ecosystem and the channel comes in. Because, you know, I, I think the one thing that differentiates, differentiates HP the most, or I would say the two things, are the customer centricity, which obviously you're seeing in who's here, and then our partner ecosystem and channel, which is unmatched by any of our competitors. It's certainly a competitive so, advantage, for yeah. sure. And being able to enable the, that ecosystem and those, cha that, those channel partners to be able to deliver these solutions to their customers, because we can't understand every business ourselves. We understand a lot of businesses. We certainly understand IT. We have a lot of businesses. That you, yeah, we've got have. a lot of specialty partners, so really enabling and activating that channel even more than we have. Well, I'm super impressed. You've got some really good name stars from Silicon Valley all over the world here in the booths using the platform, OEMing it, yeah, I mean, we, building it into their, their software. When you talk about data-driven companies and you look at who the leaders are and truly the next generation data-driven yeah. businesses that are disrupting, yeah. you know, a lot of, very large percentage of them are our customers and we're really, well, really we'll proud of We'll speak to Colin that. Mahoney about this, but I think composite apps, composite platforms, you see a lot of Lego block designs, mm -hmm. as we say. Yes. So you guys are on the right track. Thanks so much, Chris Sellen, VP of BizDev at HP Software, here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>